Okay, the one last easy thing I want to talk to you about is this clamp. Um, th this thing, this is ridiculous. This is, this is awful. It is copper, that's a, that's a plus, which means it doesn't stick to your weld, um, and copper is a, is a fantastic conductor. The, the BBs clean off of it relatively easily. Um, but, but the wire comes in here and is, is clipped down here at the back of the handle. Uh, on most really good ground clamps, you'll see that the, the ground lead comes all the way out to, to buy the workpiece. And but that's not even the real problem because copper is such a good conductor. The real problem is the shape of these jaws. These things are just, they're just bent over. They're, they're done in a sheet metal break or something or, or pressed. Um, so what you end up with is you've got all this copper, but you have a tiny, just a ridge, just the thickness of the copper as contact point, uh, making contact with your work. So, uh, you have a couple of options. One, I suppose you could try and, and pound this thing into some sort of a better, a better shape that had more of a contact patch. Um, it is copper, it's pretty soft. Or you could go get yourself a better ground clamp and, and just clip it on there. And that's probably what I'm gonna do. Um, so if you see this thing go away and you see something that looks a lot, a lot meatier and a lot more solid in the future video series, don't, don't be surprised. So is all this worth doing? I don't know. I probably wouldn't spend 80 or $100 on one of these things from the store. Uh, by the time you're into $100, you're into you know, Craigslist, Lincoln, Miller, certainly Hobart or, or Longevity if you can find them, brand name, you know, real MIG welders that will accept gas um, that come with the right, the right tip and, and certainly a better feed roller mechanism. Um, you know, at, at what point you're gonna get that break even, uh, it's up to you, it's gonna depend on what you're doing, it's gonna depend on how important, you know, nice looking and really, really sturdy welds are to, to what you're doing. Um, it's gonna depend on, on your budget. I mean, free, you can't beat free. Uh, I don't really count the cost of the spool of wire or the cost of the, the tips because those things are consumable. You're gonna buy those if you're welding regardless of what you know what machine you're into. Now if I do end up buying a new ground clamp, then that'll be you know an actual expense that wouldn't have been necessary with a with a better quality machine. But with that, uh, I'm gonna say we're good for the simple stuff. So hopefully this has been helpful for those of you who just wanna just want to get a little bit more out of your, your El Cheapo welder. In part two of this series, I'm going to dive into the much more complicated modification of turning this AC welder into a DC electronegative welder that is appropriate for flux core. Uh, but before I do that, I want to lay down a whole bunch more AC beads so I have some good stuff to compare it to. See you guys on the next one.